Hello again, everybody. My name is Safi Dean. I'm your science teacher for this course, and that's the second part. We visited previously the animals around the world. But here, we need to study something really specific. We study the adaptation, the tools that they have to survive in their environment. But here, we need to classify, to differentiate, to tell the difference between something called the structural adaptation and behavioral adaptation. Mr. Steve, we don't know the difference. Can you tell us, please? Yes. Structural adaptation means part of the body. I'm going to represent an animal for you. I'm going to recommend it for you. And then ask you a question. If this question is asking about part of the body, something in their body, that's a structural adaptation. If it wasn't a part in the body, maybe, uh, for example, part in the environment, maybe action the animal is doing, that's behavioral adaptation. Okay, let's try. Which animal here would you like to start with? Let's start by the first animal we started with which is the penguin. They have white feathers, or they have thick downy feathers. Again, feathers. Is this part in their body here, or part in the environment, or action they are doing? The answer is so simple. It's a part of the body. So the feathers here represent the structural adaptation. Is that all? Yes. So. This is it? <laughs> yes. Easy question. <laughs> Let's try another animal. The polar bear. Let's go to the polar bear. Here, the polar bear has white fur or thick white fur. Is it structural adaptation or behavioral adaptation? Structural means part of the body. Behavioral means action or maybe part in the environment. So look here, the white fur over there. Is it part of the body? Yes, so it's a structural adaptation. Easy? <laughs> it's easy but tricky because I'm going to ask you a different question, which is, they are trying to camouflage. They are making camouflage to be hidden in the environment. Okay, so they hide. They are hiding. Is the hiding here part of the body or action they are doing? Hiding. No, that's an action. An action means behavioral adaptation. So they are hiding, running, eating, storing water. All of these are examples of behavioral adaptation. Let's try another animal. Here we go. Let's go to the fennec fox. The fennec fox has sandy colored fur. The sandy colored fur, it's in front of you. Is the sandy colored fur part of the body or action they are doing? Think again, part of the body, sandy colored fur. I'm thinking like you. So it's a part of the body. So the sandy colored fur is a structural adaptation. Mm -hmm. What about the large ears? Structural adaptation. Easy? So if I told you the fennec fox is eating insects, are these part of the body? Is eating part of the body? No. So it's behavioral adaptation. Let's take another example. They store water. Store, store water. It's a structural adaptation. Sure. Mr. Save, they store water inside the body, but I didn't mention the body. I mentioned the verb, storing water, storing water. This is not a part of the body, that's an action they are doing, so it's behavioral adaptation. That's behavioral, and here it's behavioral. Let's take a look here. One of the really most important points you have to care about is panting. What does it mean, this word? Panting means to breathe quickly, like the dog. They take their breath quickly, <laughs> so much quickly. And they are, are taking their tongue outside their mouth, 
and breathe quickly like the dog. This is what's meant by pants. So they are panting or they pants. <laughs> they are doing this. Is this structural behavior? Take your time in thinking. Panting, panting. Is it part of the body? The tongue is a part. I didn't mention the tongue. The mouth is a part. I didn't mention the mouth. I'm asking about the verb, panting, action. So is this action? Yes. So it's neatly written at the feet. Easy? Let's go back. Let's visit another animal. Say hi to the Arctic fox again. It has white fur. White fur, fur is a part of their body, so it's structural adaptation. Amazing. But they are hiding themselves in the burrow. They live in burrow. So is the burrow part of the body? No. So it's behavioral adaptation. Let's take a look here. They have short ears. I have two questions for you here. The first question, is the short ear here structural or behavioral? Mr. Safe, it's a structural adaptation because it's part of the body. I'm smart enough to catch this question easily. <laughs> but the other question is tricky. Did you find the answer of the question that I asked you before? Why do they have short ears? Compare it with the fennec fox. The fennec fox has large ears, but the arctic fox has short ears. The fennec fox lives in desert, so they need large ears to reduce the body temperature, to cool their body. But the arctic fox lives already in a cold place, so why do they need large ears? They don't need it, they need short ears. This is going to help them to warm their body. So the fennec fox cools their body by the large size ears. The arctic fox help themselves to be warm by short ears. You catch both of the questions right. So now we visited penguins, polar bear, fennec fox, arctic fox. What's next? Desert lizard. Here. It has sandy colored scales. Sandy colored scales. It's a part of the body. Is this a structural or behavioral adaptation? Amazing. It's a structural adaptation. Amazing. But it stays in the shadow or in a shaded place. It stays in a shaded place. Is this structural or behavioral? I guess you catch it right. The shadow or staying in a shadow, that's an action they are doing. The lizards are doing this, that's action. So it's behavioral adaptation. Okay, they are hiding themselves in burrow. Is this a structural or behavioral? Hiding themselves in burrow. Here, there is no part of the body. So that's an action. And you said if it's an action, it's a behavioral adaptation, you are right. Let's go back. 